the new and emergent opportunities coming out from Asia has to be understood from the context of uh, how Canada works in face of growing markets and growing population densities in Asia. So the difference is that Canada is a much smaller market, but what we have to know is that we tend to pack a punch above our weight class. And it, in particular, uh, we're going to focus a little bit more on technology. That's where the emerging opportunities are. Participating in the A Black Conference for the second time has given me kind of a retrospective look at what I've been able to leverage and also gain an understanding in the larger picture. Um, representing our business is that it, we're all, we've always been looking at the commercial side and a nonprofit side. But both of these is actually driven on a private level, um, not so much on a government level. So being able to leverage on a Canadian policy and understanding the regulatory environment in which being, we are able to shape and also to guide uh, gives us a large advantage of that. Um, here's an example in that um, we've been involved on a nonprofit side for education in Hong Kong. And education in Hong Kong is a very costly uh, uh, initiative. Uh, as an example, to build a, um, a full kindergarten to 12 campus it requires a capital cost and, a, and an operational outlay of around $300 million just for one campus that would uh, cover 2,000 students in that way. And it's not a really, um, even from a self, uh, financially self-sustainable sustainable model, it's a very def difficult endeavor. Um, and in a space where Canadians are competing uh, on a level with the British, the Australians, and Americans is a very difficult space where Hong Kong people don't really see Canadians uh, in the same light. We, we're seen as a much smaller country with less competitive edge. So the thing is that the value of education is seen as a very good thing, but the bureaucrats in Hong Kong are weary to grant land, to grant subsidies to Canadian schools because they're not as well understood. And they tend to uh, grant a lot of schools, um, sorry, a lot of space uh, to uh, British schools because it used to be a British colony. So what we're looking to do and what, we've, what I've learned through this process is to bring in the government on the federal level, the provincial level, um, as a delegation to talk directly with the Hong Kong government to educate them on initiatives that Canada has taken to drive international education that might benefit Hong Kong society in that way. It doesn't seem so much as a, a company to government discussion, but a government to government discussion that would be driven forth, I would say that would achieve our, achieve our strategic goals in Fairchild much better in that way.